Welcome to LedgerCast here with my usual co-host, Brian, today. Brian, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Your name is Josh? That is. That it is. Okay. Was I supposed to say my name? Uh, yeah, that's part of the spiel. You're taking over, right? Uh, yeah. That was in the rider today, for this week. Yeah. Josh has uh, filed a complaint with the union, and uh, he has decided that he should do the intros now. Welcome to uh, Carpe Cast. How about that? I like I, I like Ledger Cast better. I just don't like that it's associated with you. You know, like that's, <laughs> that's the issue. It's just your filthy co-host, Ichi it, Cast. I like that. It's Ichi good, Cast. That's good one, okay. Mac. Yeah, I like Ichi Cast. Well, nevertheless, we are here, and uh, you know what? We need to find out when the heck is the number going to start going up again, Josh. I need I need number to go down first. You know, people are still way too euphoric. Uh, I don't think it's any- every little. You know, here's the thing, Brian. Michael Saylor, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but we're not in it for the billionaires and millionaires, Brian. You know, who are you in it for? Just saying, this guy's like attracting money to Bitcoin. Great, but that's not why I got into Bitcoin. You know, yeah, I'm here for the tech. My thing with him is he. I mean, he didn't buy any Bitcoin until it was over $9,000. And that was like the memes, the $9,000 memes. And that was his entry price for his earliest buys. I mean, there's the whole we're still early meme, but I feel like he had plenty of time to educate himself before it went through a whole hype cycle. And now everybody's like, he's a genius. And I don't know. I don't get it either. Yeah. That's, I think that's a big, I'm like, I'm glad anybody comes in. Great. Big tent, whatever. But we don't need to treat this guy like he's the Messiah, you know? Yeah. He's, he's got, he's got money and he's got bags. Now he's doing mm-hmm. it on leverage. That's really the only news that even came out this week was that they issued debt. Um, I think it was worth 400 million initially and it was oversubscribed. Um, it's a convertible coupon debt that they, don't have to pay back for a long time, but essentially they're leveraging their company and then using it to buy Bitcoin. So it's basically the same thing as going long on uh, BitMEX, <laughs> but with a public company because they're not even using it for capital investments or whatever. It's just purely going into their treasury investments. They're, they're, I feel like this is the official like turning the business into just a Bitcoin holdings, which is very strange. Like It's different than investing your treasury to me. Yeah, the whole situation's strange. Um, but hey, I'm here for the ride, so whatever. Yeah, I feel like they're kind of overstocking themselves. Like that, I feel like overstock tied themselves to not Bitcoin necessarily, but crypto. And they're kind of doing that on the Bitcoin side of things, whatever. But I don't know. I think we need to be careful about saying they're, you know, going to take us to the galaxies or whatever. Yeah, if we had an actual ETF, then it'd be a different story. And, you know, that could be the job of the, the entity would be to take money and turn it into BTC versus a company which does something else and then is now doing this Bitcoin thing. It's just weird. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's been a tough week for trading, but if you were going to trade this week, then you should do it on Matcha. You can go to ledgerstatus.com slash Matcha, M-A-T-C-H-A. Our good friends at Matcha, it's built by the team at Zero X and it is a uh, fully aggregated experience, but you can also now use custom tokens. I've been doing that when I have some altcoin that is not in their list. Uh, I should have just ignored them and not traded them. Spoiler. Um, but they allow you to do that. They allow you to take that risk, type in the token ad- any token address, and it'll find it for you. And you can even do limit orders, which is really cool. It'll uh, fill your limit uh, once the price hits, just like on centralized exchanges, you can now do that on a DEX, which is pretty amazing. And it's uh, aggregated for the liquidity uh, across swaps. So you don't need to know where has the liquidity gone, Uniswap or Sushi Swap or Balance or whatever. It just takes care of that. So thanks to Matcha. Was, they're still rocking. I was going to say, how does that work with the limit orders? Does it like put it into escrow or something? Like, does it lock it in you, your wallet? You uh, sign. You put a signature on the on the transaction, so it's not the same as like doing a full transaction. You're essentially okay. doing it the, says, this. Is what I want to do if it happens. Yep, sort of thing. Yep. And then once the criteria are met, it uh, it goes for it. Um, 
unfortunately, my limit orders have not hit because they're take profit <laughs> limit orders. <laughs> and my, uh, you can't take profit when your bags are underwater, Josh. Um, that's, that's well, that's true. Yeah. However, I, uh, I should fill, put some in to fill, to buy the dips, um, on, on something, if there's something dip worthy to buy, but nevertheless, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it, but yeah, mass mutual also this week, pretty big news because they're a super risk averse entity insurance company. Like again, what do, what do any of us care at the end of the day? Right. It's like, all this is doing is validating stuff. We already know. Maybe it sounds too like pie in the sky, but it's like, great. They're here. This is what we wanted. Cool. So mass, you know? What is mass mutual? I don't even know what they are. Some sort of insurance thing. That's all and I know. So they're putting some money in Bitcoin. This is hundred, hundred million, right? Wow. That one, no, I don't know. That one's new to me. I didn't pay attention. Yeah. I, so they're another entity. So they are but, going on the Bitcoin treasuries list. That's pretty or, cool. Or, uh, I think they said they're doing it to avoid inflation. Oh, okay. So like a hedge, yeah. I guess, which is, which is what, what it's meant we're to here do. for. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Uh, the other one that went live is Bitwise, the top 10 crypto index fund. This is another OTC offering similar to GBTC, except this is a uh, basket of the top 10 coins, um, which I don't want to know what's in the top 10 right now. It would make me sad. Um What's interesting, Josh has the website pulled up. What's that premium on the top? It's cut off a little bit. Uh, or what's the, what is that that you have pulled up? If you just type in Bitwise, it'll pop up. But it's bitwiseinvestments.com. I was going to see what was actually in oh. in the top 10. Uh, I see. Yeah, the market price, though, $40. The NAV, um, net asset value, sixteen twenty five. So it's already trading at like two and a half times its NAV, which is crazy. Um, I was looking at this at 25 and thinking like, oh, I'm going to wait until this goes below 20 and buy it with the lower premium. And I should have done it. Should have just market bought that crap off the lows because it really went for it. Um, so similar to GBTC, I mean, you and I, people who are already in the market aren't going to like rush to this stuff, right? This is like people who aren't in crypto having yeah. access to stuff like this, right? Yeah, we'll spend a few minutes talking about why someone would buy this or, or even GPTC, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll talk about GPTC a little bit more. Uh, the constituents of this one you have pulled up, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Chainlink, Cardano, Stellar, EOS, and Tezos. Yuck. So I guess with, uh, what, seven of these being less less than 2% constituency, like, what's the point, you know? Yeah, it's 75% Bitcoin, and 13% Ethereum. So all the others are really a very small percentage. I didn't realize it was so unevenly distributed, but I guess it makes it, sense based on its market cap distribution, right? It's almost like a top 10 by name and not actual, like like at the end of the day, the, the Tezos portion isn't really gonna move the needle, you know? <laughs> well, I guess the point was if one of those escalates significantly, then uh, it would, you know, have an extra weight. So if there's an alt season, it would increase the value quite a bit. Um, yeah, and it, it's dynamic. I get that, but I wonder in its how, current state. It's like it's basically Bitcoin and ETH. Like, let's yeah. be real. I wonder, from a custody perspective, what do they do when something new goes into the top ten, and how do they determine that? Like, how do they change constituents? That would be an interesting thing to look up and how they structure this. But nevertheless, another OTC product and Bitwise. Um, all right, so let's talk about whether it's BitW or GBTC or ETHE, um, why people will do some of these, and then also some of the ARBs that are playing into them, especially the GBTC premium is what I'll focus on. And I did a Twitter thread about it. Um, so these are available through traditional brokerages. Now, it's not everybody. It's not like any 401k can access it, but... Anyone that has a traditional brokerage account that has access to OTC securities can access it. That's not everybody. Like, for instance, my wife has a 401k where it can only invest in mutual funds. So even a Bitcoin ETF wouldn't be accessible. But a lot, they may allow ETFs and mutual funds, or they may allow individual securities, but they have to be listed. So this is kind of the lowest tier because it's OTC, um, but still some you know, retirement accounts that have tax benefits do have access to this. And those people may say, heck yeah, I'm investing in crypto through my tax protected accounts, which makes total sense, to be honest. Um, 
And that's one of the benefits of these for sure. Uh, and it, it's even worth the premium for some people. I bet a lot of these people are just speculators looking for somewhere else to buy from or somewhere easier to buy from. Um, I don't know how Bitwise is issued because we can talk about that premium that Bitwise offers right now, Josh. But what I do want to talk about is the GBTC premium specifically because the GBTC uh shares are issued based on their sales team selling them. Uh, and then they essentially have a contract to create those shares, uh, buy Bitcoin representative of those shares. And then someone gets the GBTC at net asset value, basically at the price of Bitcoin. And then they can sell it with the premium included, but they have to wait six months before those GBTC unlock. So when people are arbitraging GBTC, or this is also speculative of why there's a lot of demand for GBTC, is people are buying it, holding it for six months, maybe hedging out the actual Bitcoin, although I kind of doubt it. And then after six months, they collect essentially the premium of whatever, um, whatever Bitcoin was, you know, actually trading at versus what it, what they bought it for. Um, the premium historically over the past couple of months has been like, 15 to 30 percent depending on when um so for people that have a six month or longer holding plan it actually makes total sense to buy gbtc directly issued from grayscale rather than bitcoin in other fashions because one they get filled uh and two they get this additional like free 20 percent on top assuming the premium stays for six months what they lose is liquidity for that period of six months for a lot of buyers, though, that's great. This is just like free yield on top, right, Josh? That's what it seems like. And I think a lot of people are taking advantage of that, which is why like the ETH premium is coming down, the Bitcoin premium is coming down. Yeah. Um, and I think you'll continue to see it coming down over the next however many months, you know, like yeah. you're saying, six months out. So in order to do, this is kind of like yield farming, but with le uh, legacy products. <laughs> Uh, but the, the interesting thing is someone can choose when to hedge the BTC itself. So let's say you bought a hundred Bitcoin through GPTC. Well, you can hold and keep the exposure to those Bitcoin, but if you ever felt like you wanted to risk off, you could just sell futures. You'd need to maintain collateral of course for that, but you could sell a hundred BTC worth of futures, not have pay fees because it's a future. Um, and keep your 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 delta neutral and then just collect the premium after six months with the cost being how much collateral you had to put aside in order to maintain that futures short um, obviously you have to do that on very low leverage in case it goes way up like if you're way off sides in that hedge but i bet a lot of people are hedging these kind of uh periodically rather than all the time basically to maintain their their profit from the premium itself. So, because I, I would think most of these people aren't just doing it ruthlessly for the dollars. They're also doing it for the exposure to Bitcoin, but it's a interesting dynamic that this is creating because it does create, you would think some downward pressure in futures for the people that choose to do that at the same time that it's creating an upward premium in GBTC because there's so much demand for GBTC. Cause that's in addition to people like you or me that says, okay, well I have some money over here. So I'm going to go buy a GPTC with it. Cause it's the setup that I like the most or whatever, you know, dumb money like us. <laughs> yeah. But for the most part, you and I aren't, you're either doing that with a plan, like you're saying like six months out and the, 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 the nav premium to nav, or you're just buying it because you, it says blockchain in the name or whatever, right? Yeah, it's, like not, I mean, it's totally both, but the people that are trading it for that premium are some, some are doing it smartly. Like they're deliberately doing that with hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, this, right. this, this OTC offering is massive. It would be like a top 50 ETF or something like that now. Um, and they're, they're buying more Bitcoin than is being mined, which is creating inherent positive price pressure all on its own. And to a ch question in the chat, do I think a Roth IRA could trade without tap tax implications for GBTC? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, I mean, uh, most of my active trading is in an IRA in legacy markets because that's where I can trade without having to worry about taxes. 
if I wanted to have a longer term position, maybe I'd consider it in a taxed account. But like that's the type of decisions people make when they're doing trading versus not trading, you know, long term capital gains versus uh, short term trading and putting it in your using your IRA or your if you have a self-managed 401k or whatever, if you're American or if you're not American, you know, whatever the equivalents are, that's totally a way to do more frequent trading without the tax implications that you have in regular old Bitcoin. Um, so there's huge advantages to it if you, if the premium is maintained, et cetera, uh, if you're just a regular trader. So, um, I mean, I think GPTC is a clever product. Those premiums, I would think, will go away in a big time once an actual ETF comes and could also reduce the, uh, the buy pressure that's created by GPTC. So, Josh, do you think an ETF could be the like a top type of move, a sell the news type of move, or would it create so much de new demand that it would not be a sell the news event? Well, it seems pretty clear that there's interest in buying BTC It's with the rate limiting factor being access. So, so you don't think it'd be a sell the news really? I, I don't think so. I mean, but it, prob like it probably would eliminate this massive premium in GBTC. Oh yeah, for sure. GBTC premium, um, you know, you could plot it out with rumors on an ETF and you'd see like the premium goes down as rumors on ETF go up uh, naturally, I think. Yeah. Um, One yeah. question I had about the uh, that trade, that uh, GBTC uh, premium, you know, hedging it out and whatever. Like, do you think the CME stuff, this leveraged net short is... Uh, GBTC related at all, or do you think it's something else? What is the net positioning? Are people net short right now? Yeah, so leveraged money is net short and uh, at an all time high. Yeah, so then, I would imagine that's a oh look, look at that dealer asset manager leverage money other cool. Uh, yeah, I would imagine that that is significantly due to people hedging GBTC, which could create an upward squeeze at the same time, which is makes it a dicey proposition for the people that are trying to hedge it. It has to be like, has to be well collateralized. Like they don't lose money if they're just equally hedging what their long position is in GPTC. Right. But I do imagine that it's got to be a part of it and it could prolong the upward squeeze because more people are going to continue doing this trade. And then if they're negative, you know, they're hedging against it, they're just creating squeeze potential on those margin positions. I'm, I'm here for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like seeing this as we're going up, but seeing it as we're Tommy. looking like we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a little concerning, I guess. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Uh, before we get too much further, that Bitwise fund, what's interesting to me there, you know, the NAV is at 16, the fund's at 42. I don't know if this one has the same issuance methods or what something we need to dig into in the paperwork or if someone knows let us know if this has something like that though i would think these premiums shouldn't get too much more out of hand but maybe i'm completely wrong on that uh because you'd think people would start to participate in the same way um yeah so, all i know is that they uh rebalance monthly but i don't know it's it's weird like if you look at the the historical performance of the bitwise 10 like it's clearly outperformed btc yeah. At, at least up until 2019. Like after that, like this, you know, I don't think the hassle's worth it essentially. Um, so I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Right. Like if there's a true hype cycle though, a true, oh, but season. we're looking at it. We're looking at, I'm looking at it in the now thinking like, this is pointless. This is stupid. Like what's the point? <laughs> uh, but if you back test it, you say, okay, you know, the bitwise 10 outperform BTC by quite a bit. Um, yeah, added just a, a little extra premium. Right, and it it doesn't like always outperform BTC, but when it does, it does. And I think that's, you know, that's quote unquote alt season. Yeah, right. And maybe that's what they're going for with it. Um, I don't know. I don't some know. people are it's, just going to be more intrigued by an index than they are like just Bitcoin. You know, the, yeah, and I like the blockchain, again, Bitcoin, yada, yada. I like access. I like people tossing money into Bitcoin and crypto. That's fine. You know, awesome, cool. It can be if it the fact that it's like mostly junk is whatever, but what are you gonna do? You know? Yeah. And you know, there are other funds kind of similar to this, but I think Bitwise's is novel in some ways. In the chat, 
uh, Hi-Fi mentioned GDLC, which has uh, not half the premium that uh, Bitwise has right now. So I don't know what is in GDLC, but yeah. Anyway, this is a thing. I mean, and Grayscale has ETH, E, and the Litecoin one, whatever it's called, and those yeah, have Grayscale those have really large premiums. A ton of stuff, and uh, yeah, the Litecoin one, I think it was you'd like, have to check. It's like five thousand percent or something crazy. Yeah, it's insane. What's the ticker LTCN? Yeah, uh, let me just look it up real quick. To sure. See what's even on here. Um, that's not on here. <laughs> yeah. And it, it could be purely because of size or access to do the hedge. I don't know. I don't know why some of these are such massive premiums. But nevertheless, it's something to consider, especially with the GBTC one, cons uh, considering the actual size of it. Um, you know, meanwhile, Bitcoin's been dipping, teasing. We don't really know. I mean, the trend is definitely uh, at risk, is what I would say. Um it looks kind of double toppy. I have the 20 day moving average here, which has curled down for the first time uh, since September 22nd, uh, which is when it flipped positive. So if you went long September 22nd at 10.5 and closed yesterday, uh, you know, at 18.4, you made great money purely following the slope of the 20 day moving average. <laughs> and that's probably worked for you pretty well over all time periods except for 2018 uh, when we spent nine months or whatever chopping. Um, so some of these trend shifts are probably from basic moving average trend following strategies, essentially flipping bearish or close long, you know, to in order to close longs. Uh, you are pulling up the cloud, which is showing price just below the Tinken, which is the fast moving average on an Ichimoku system. Now that's a, that's closing below the, t with price below the Tinkin is like the really aggressive way to close your longs, right? Like on a cloud system. Yeah. And I don't even, I don't even know if anybody actually uses that as a long close in that, way. in that way. But like for this specific situation, you know, to me, this looks like definitely you're out, you're out of your longs here. I, I shudder to think of people who are still holding a long up here, you know, you could be a Bitcoin maximalist and think all these treasuries coming in are great and whatever, whatever you think, whatever the narrative you want to think, right? But to me, the technicals do not look good at all here. Um, well, even when you look at the uh, the smaller stuff on the alligator fractals, very clearly the stop out a couple of days ago at like eighteen five. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't have any evidence right now to go long. I just don't. What you're looking at, though, it's not necessarily to say it can't go up. Like something like this with a some kind of ascending triangle or whatever could form. But you're just essentially guessing that you're trying to create the lower bounds of consolidation here because this could go on. If it even forms that, that would go on to create an ascending triangle that lasts through the end of the year. And you could just wait until it fills that out, <laughs> you know. Uh, which would tell you to be out for the next thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars up, because it wouldn't finish consolidating really until about nineteen five. Um, so essentially, it's telling you not to rush it. Yeah, I think last week we were fifty fifty as far as what might happen. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think for me this week, it's definitely the bias is down over up. Sentiment is super bullish still scarily bullish you think euphorically so? bullish oh yeah dude with the, with the mass mutual stuff i think people are just like you know it's just validating everybody's belief that this is going to go to infinity um but i think the intraday moves aren't going to be as pretty right i have seen a disturbing number of uh calls for like the three hundred thousand dollar bitcoin and stuff gold parity type of things um low time frames are giving similar warnings essentially saying either, you know, it needs to bounce soon for super bullish consolidation or, you know, we got room for more down, another $1,000, another $1,500, whatever. I don't know how much. Um, you know, we talked some about where to buy the dip last week, but wherever you think that is, wherever you are seeking um, an opportunity to buy, that's what you'd be waiting on at this point or that deeper consolidation. Your pitchfork is also showing us at resistance, I see. Yeah, so 
everything I'm looking at is saying we're at resistance, we're reversing. You can look at this as an M double top, as an inverted Adam and Eve. That doesn't complete for another couple thousand bucks probably, but let's say it does, then it just goes to 15.5. You know, that's where it wants to go. At the end of the day, that's where my bids are. Just waiting. You could short this if you wanted to, yeah. if you're brave. One other thing of note is that all-time high weekly close was around 18.7, 18.750, something like that, back in 2017. Uh, we went above it, and now we're below it. <laughs> so it could be a little bit of a all-time high and dip, you know, find somewhere to consolidate below that. The pr weekly close back in the day below that was closer to like 16.1, which we already tested once. So that might be where to bounce from and have a larger consolidation. And if if abandoned to there, uh, could easily be back in the kind of 14K range, which is where the 20 week is leaning, guiding up towards as well. Um, so we could get a sizable dip into the end of the year if it you know decides to do that. On the long-term scale, there's still nothing bearish about this. It's purely chilling out after 3Xing or whatever it did. So it's not something to freak out about, but it's a, a matter to consider if you are looking to take end of your profit or uh, you want to hedge to maintain your dollar value, whatever you're considering on those fronts. Um, the only issue I have with doing that right now is that if we have a hyper bullish consolidation and we go up from here, form a low time frame, try, you know, that kind of thing, then you're essentially shorting the bottom. So there could be some shenanigans here still that could shake you out of your shorts. And you yeah, know, but you're going to see that on the, on like the fractal alligator stuff, right? Yeah. Like, you have to be, you have to be okay with like selling here, it going up $500, but not changing your philosophy, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And even still, this isn't like saying go short right now. It's just saying Take the time. long is not the trade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's saying you don't need a, you know, 20 X long act like the next stop is 30 K. Don't be a hero. Yeah. That's not the trade here. The trade is either to protect, to take profit on leverage, to prepare, to buy dip, you know, those type, those types of things. It's not giving you massive short triggers. It's not giving you, um, massive, you know, continuation, uh, acknowledgement either. Exactly. One thing else I was going to say is this is only like 14% down from, um, like the, the predicted balance is 14% away from the current price. So yeah. even that's like nothing really. I mean, we had, yeah. so if we go to 15, it's not the world's largest drop. We had a 16% drop in, um, in November. So, yeah, I think part of what's come, part of what that is is being affected here is that um, altcoins got pretty well crushed by all this because they were hyping up pretty big and um, Ethereum's held up okay. I mean, it's still at five fifty, but you know some other altcoins that had moved pretty much retraced their entire moves up. Um, so if if anyone was like heavy in altcoins, didn't take any profit, that kind of thing. It could it could still be hurting at these prices. Now you're, think, you're pulling up I, XRP. It's like I think it's there. a great. Well, no, it's a great weather vein. I think for alts right now uh, because there's so much dumb money into this flare token bullcrap. Yeah, um, they really hacked the system here too because every exchange is essentially because they listed XRP. They're being forced by customers to not only support this stupid airdrop, but also email their customers about it. <laughs> so yeah. it's like free press because they're having to acknowledge that they're supporting this, this thing. And it's, it's so ridiculous to me. Like it, it just makes me, I don't even, I don't see the purpose of whatever they're doing. It just seems like a scam, like a way to sell a, a way to sell your bags, you know, dump on retail. Yeah, I agree. Um, but nevertheless, it's consolidating to some degree. Maybe it's distribution, but or maybe it's consolidation. I don't know. That airdrop's really soon. So if I was in this, I would no longer want to be in this. If anyone's out there and they're like, I'm just waiting on Moon because Flare is going to be the future. Well, I guess well, like, what's the expectation for the price of Flare? 
uh like, who is knows? that gonna be is that gonna be traded somewhere like, i don't know but because if you're waiting for the airdrop isn't the expectation you're gonna make more money after the airdrop well the thing that everyone should know we've learned this lesson many times this is like an old <laughs> trick this is an old trick it is it's one of the oldest tricks of the book yeah, yeah nxt did this a while back with uh ignis if y'all remember that from 2017 it went absolutely insane and then it freaking died as, like right before the airdrop uh you know because people front run this stuff they don't give a crap about the token that token is not gonna be worth anything this is not gonna be worth anything the airdrop will be the top yeah z classic was another one um th this has happened many times this is just an old altcoin scam trick that has <laughs> worked before and then it stopped working but now it's working again and and one of the biggest cryptocurrencies in the space is taking advantage of it hence xrp so there's that uh i wouldn't it, i don't know what the data is on that airdrop maybe somebody in the chat can give us the shortcut sometime this month so be very careful if you're in xrp yeah i mean if i'm just looking at technicals it doesn't look terrible but the moment it starts to look terrible i think the entire market's gonna look really really bad, bad. <laughs> yeah 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 um, because this is barely kind of barely hanging on there by a thread. You can say inverted Adam and Eve versus like flag or something. I don't know, but yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not betting, but I'm bullishly on this move next move for ripple for sure. Yeah. Uh, we talked about how precarious of a situation link looked in, uh, in a previous episode and it has, uh, indeed, Failed the 200-day moving average against Bitcoin, like we talked about, and it just looks like it's. I mean, it, it looks like it's just getting ready to to make the final plunge here. You know, like it's fighting it still, kinda, um, but it's ready to to really start to get rocked relative to Bitcoin. Um, I do not, I do not like this look. If I'm a Link Marine, I would want. I think 50k SAS is well in play. That's a weekly support. It's basically an air gap. I would think that's where that's where you finally might find a start start to find some supports relative to BTC. Um, what do you think about it? My favorite part is anytime I talk about Link in a negative way on Twitter, I'm still constantly attacked by people or bots. I'm not really sure who who's who at this point, but yeah, that's just the giant signal to me that be careful, <laughs> be really careful out there. Oh, by the way, they're also selling. I'd have to like map this out, but it looks looks like they're selling quicker. Even quicker. I might be wrong here, but it looks like they're selling even quicker than they already were. I'd have to do the math on that. But well, for those for those of you who would uh, be upset, let me point out a couple other technicals, and this time I'll show the, versus the dollar. One, this is a twenty week moving average relative to the dollar. It has traded below it before, uh, but this is the first time it's lost it since April twenty twenty in the recovery. Uh, and it's after a lower high from August uh, and what looks like a massive distribution pattern. And it looks like it's finally starting to fail that. The weekly supports on it are like 940 to match the some weekly closing lows. But the one that makes more sense to me is at $8. And then the big breakout that it had back in the day was all the way down at 450. Now this is relative to the dollar if Bitcoin continues to go down, I have a feeling Link would follow, but more. <laughs> like, I think Link would get absolutely massacred if Bitcoin does the full, like, 14, 15K type of move. Uh, to where 5 to $8, somewhere in there. I know that's a huge range, but both are, like, 50% or more below where we are. Um, so if you think the worst is done in terms of the Link dump, I would uh, beg to differ. I would be very cautious about that. And in the light of team selling on top of it, it's not exciting. Yeah, I, I just don't know who sees that chart and it's like, yeah, let's let's buy it's it. Long right here, you know. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look good. It looks like that BTC pair versus the weekly looks like a blow off and then you know death. Um, and it it looks like it could. Ease, it looks like it could just go full bear market, you know, full market cycle. This is an altcoin, just like, just like others. There's nothing saying it can't go down 80% relative to Bitcoin. And I know no Link Marine wants to hear that. I'm just telling you it's possible. It is an altcoin. It is the best performing altcoin 
over the bear market, but you know, the show could be over. Is that bottom things? Sure. <laughs> I'm, it, it could be. I don't know. It just doesn't look good to me. I'm not going to touch it. Um, it's, I talk- it, it's not a long, and if I was a long time holder and I still had not taken any profit, I'd be very nervous right now. It is the farthest below the 200 day moving average it's ever been probably at, right now. Relative um, to Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. But we warned about that back when it was just barely below, you know, it's not like we're telling you this is when you should have sold. We're right, telling right. you you're already late, buddy. You know, <laughs> like, I've been telling you, investment advice, but yes, but we've been saying for a while, like this is very nerve wracking. And now, um, you know, it was, it was it was really high. It made a uh, it made a lower high, yada yada. Now it's down sixty percent off the highs, uh, relative to Bitcoin. But it, there's nothing to say it can't go another sixty percent. It's an altcoin truth. I'm sorry to break it to you. I agree. Um, I was looking at band. So basically, alts for me right now have like three charts. It's either like this edge to edge possibility, sideways nothingness, or Inverted Adam and Eve. Like, I don't really see anything else anywhere. You mean in terms of what's actually being bull, like looking kind of bullish? No, just like scan, do, do a scan of like 50 charts. To me, I can put them into three different baskets. Oh, yeah. They're either on the verge of bullish reversal, on the verge of bearish continuate, bearish reversal, or just doing a bunch of nothing. Like uh, MTA, I think, was one of them. Uni might have been one of them. Comp, oddly enough, is one of them that's like decoupling from everything. And then it, well, then it retraced a lot of the move. Um, and so did MTA. I mean, I had interest in MTA. Um, so I guess my point is if BTC drops like we think it will, I think it will, then I think all the alts are just going to go down, right? Like, I don't think it's going to matter what the chart looks like at that point, right? Uh, because like I might be bullish on band or like expecting some reversal, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to take that trade if I assume Bitcoin's going to hit a 15 percent drop, right? Yeah, you would think, oh, uh, Bitcoin's going to settle down now. Altcoins will move and do something. The truth of it is, we haven't seen evidence of that yet. Not much, at least. Um, you know, I do think band and a couple others they still look okay. Um, I bought the top on synthetics SNX uh, thinking it was going to break out above $5 and it did for half a day and then just went down, 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 down. (laughs) Uh, But still looking at synthetics, the hard part about this is like, where are you totally proven wrong? Well, it requires really a dip below like $4 because it could be just a complex head and shoulders type of thing, which is like what you showed in band. Um, so I'm struggling on where to where to cut my losses on that because I, I totally screwed up on synthetics. So I, I sold Zcash, which I, I wasn't a plan follower, except for I did, uh-huh. kind, of, I did kind of follow the plan. I sold it uh, in profit relative to the dollar. And then I... Um, I'm shocked. Well, it, it started to give up the BTC relative pair. It was looking weak to the dollar. Bitcoin was looking weak. So I got out. And at the same time, synthetics was looking good, so I uh, bought synthetics, and synthetics went down too, so it didn't matter. Um, but I, some of these have some potential still. That's what I I, I struggle with that. Um, yeah, I don't think like you should walk away from all these charts completely. I just think it's there's going to be a better time to take a long trade here. You know, like on band, I'm still stocking it. I look at it every day. You know, I, I'm yeah. not going to stop looking at it, but. Yes, uh, stocking and, and making the trade are, are different. I thought yeah. I was buying the verge of the breakout. Oh, the mistake I meant to mention. Um, so synthetics has this thing where you can stake synthetics and then in order to st- – you're staking the synthetics and you're minting something else uh, that you can then do something with. So it's a way of taking leverage. So if you, say you have 100 synthetics, you, st- you stake it, and then you mint SUSD, their stable coin, and you get – I think it's a 600% margin. So whatever you, whatever that equates to, um, let's say a thousand dollars that you can borrow in SUSD. (laughs) What I didn't realize is that when you do that, I just did it to test, see how it works. Well, it locks your synthetics for at least 24 hours. (laughs) So I did it as a test and then it failed the initial levels for like a, you know, okay, this didn't work. Let's get out, lose a couple percent and you're done. Um, 
and it was locked. I couldn't, I couldn't get out <laughs> for another like 16 or 17 hours or something like that after I noticed it. And so I just had to sit there and uh, just lose my tail. So now I'm just sitting down in this bag 15%, but now I don't really want to sell it because I'm like, now between here and my next level is a little bit less of an issue, yada, yada. So it's like, oh man, I screwed that up. Like I completely uh, lost my ability to have that tight stop loss because I didn't realize it had that 24 hour lock. So be careful out there with your DeFi fun stuff. Um, you were just it sounds like a, a learning life lesson. It was a life lesson. <clears throat> I get, I, I give myself those every now and then. Um, I was looking at the DeFi perp. It's another weather vane for what's going on. And this, you know, it's an M double top. You can't, how are you, you can't be bullish on that, right? Are you bullish on an M double top? Um, or it's a complex head and shoulders inverse. What? what? Uh, what planet are you on? <laughs> <laughs> Altcoin Hopium planet. I um, guess. Uh, however, I will say at... when you merge what we talked about with XRP, when you merge synthetics failing that breakout, when you merge um, wh whatever, the, oh, Link. Like we're talking about several coins that don't look good. Um, like you said maybe one or two weeks ago that if your top coin in the sector is failing, you know, that's not bullish. Right? It doesn't speak well for the rest. I think the large caps are likely to follow uh, follow Bitcoin, unfortunately. So it's a matter of trying to find when are you going to have that spring where everyone decides, okay, it's okay to do altcoins now. It's not really giving us great evidence of that right now. It's not to say it, they are, it, stock, but don't leap. And another way to look at this, if all the charts look the same, that's typically bearish. Yeah, because it's all that, correlated. that correlation. It's not the inverse correlation that we knew and loved in 2017. Right. So, you know, the, the winners like comp are usually the ones that are doing their own thing, right? Right. Um, but USDT, very, oh, sorry, few, very few alts are giving evidence of that. Yeah, very few. XRP kind of, or not XRP, <laughs> XMR kind of is. Um, yeah, we can take a look at XMR. Um, but I that. did notice... Tether USD drop below a dollar again. I can't remember. Is that bearish or bullish? It's historically not been bullish. It's bearish because essentially it's below a dollar, meaning there's a lot of demand for tethers. I don't even think I'd read into it that much. I just read it as if it's if tethers below a dollar, demand for crypto is down. Okay. If people are buying tether, then they're trying to get into crypto. Even though, like logically, it doesn't make sense as far as like the safe haven argument. Yeah. Because you think if if we're bearish, Tether would be up, which yeah. was the case in March during the dip, but I don't know. I, I, don't can, know. I can believe that. Um, so Monero, I think I have a thesis as to what's going on here, but it looks really good. It's breaking above its range. Not not made a new high yet. That would be like 144 or so. Um, but just on a baseline, it looks real strong relative to some others making weekly highs. Um, so there's a lot of rumor stuff going around about Mnuchin making these, uh, uh, lame duck regulations about custody and wallets and crypto. Um, have you heard about these? I've heard about them. The rumors. I essentially I don't saying know. that exchanges would have to require KYC on wallets somehow. I don't really know. It's complicated. And it it sounded like pre KYC, like yeah. in order to accept your transaction or move your coins off the exchange, you have to KYC your wallet. Like right. it doesn't make sense. There's crime and there's pre crime. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's like punishing you for for uh, thought crimes or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the the there's been a lot of warnings about like, hey, if you haven't done it already, now's a good time to you know, kind of segregate some coins to places that aren't attached to your name and stuff like that. So I think that a lot of the strength in XMR is due to that because XMR is good at what it does. Um, and I think people are taking some of these threats seriously. I don't know that I take these threats that seriously. Seems like a lot to do <laughs> for uh, an administration on the way out the door. But I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> what's, uh, like logically, what's the worst that could happen? Like they could try to do whatever they want. 
it's going to decrease, it's going to decrease trading in the U S like who cares? It's already happening. Right. Like, yeah, but it doesn't stop people from, you know, pushing into privacy coins or making new wallets or whatever their goal is. But it seems like there's some impact on XMR at least not Zcash funny enough. Um, but I mean, XMR is reclaiming the lows relative to Bitcoin. It looks, it's doing what I wanted Zcash to do. So there's a lesson there. Uh, <laughs> Um, there is a lesson there. There is a lesson there. Yeah, XMR USD looks great. XMR BTC looks like a mess. That's well, it, it 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 bounced off the lows, but I agree, it's not the prettiest. It um, lost all of its gains from October 2019. No, in like no, two I, weeks. I agree with that because it didn't do anything while Bitcoin was uh, rocketing up. But yeah. the USD pair consolidated that whole time. It didn't like lose a whole bunch, which is. That is the type of thing that happens in this inverse correlation environment. So it's like Monero is on the 2017 altcoin track of, you know, inverse correlation and nothing else. And like very, uh, very few other things are. Uh, but nevertheless, Monero looks fantastic relative to the dollar. And maybe it, maybe it will make this push up if these rumors keep going or who knows. But it's breaking out of, let's see what this time frame is. It's uh, this consolidation has been f two months. So it, it made the kind of relative highs, 130 to 135, uh, mid-October, and it's breaking up from those right now. So, I mean, it looks amazing. XMR looks freaking amazing. And I don't have a bag, Josh. I agree. It looks good. I've been holding it since December 2019. But, yeah, it looks good. Yeah. It's, doing what you, it's doing exactly what you'd expect a trend, a bull trend to do. It's yeah. had multiple bullish reconsolidations on the cloud, multiple bullish TK recrosses above the cloud. It looks, it looks good. It looks really good. Especially when you're looking at like compare this USD chart to like BTC or ETH. It's like a completely different animal. Yeah. So that's essentially our, our summary of price stuff. All of this in context is to go alongside legacy is not exactly looking great either. And the dollar I'd just say it's consolidating. It's not, I wouldn't call this bullish for, for the Dixie, um, but it's not making those new lows right away. Also, apparently the speculative positioning on the Dixie is really, really, really bearish, uh, which makes me fear some degree of, uh, you know, bearish retest or, or short squeeze that could happen on the Dixie. Um, so we're not getting the new lows right away with the Dixie and at the same time, legacy markets have been a little dicey this week. I mean, we've had a couple of gap down push up days in a row after one pretty solid down day. Uh, so it's not exactly like, oh my gosh, the world is ending, but it is three down days in a row in legacy markets, two of which bought back, got themselves bought back up a little bit. A test of the 20 day moving average on SPY you know, but if there's people speculating that, hey, the highs are in for the year, we need to retrace, we're going to, you know, lose 10%, whatever, that would encourage some uh, bullishness in, in the Dixie while the legacy markets as a whole kind of chill out for a little while. Because when you look at these on a weekly, I mean, they've <laughs> it's been a heck of a year. It's been a record year. And you got to think some of these fund managers or whoever else are going to uh, – potentially lock some profit here in the month of December, wouldn't you assume? you think so. I, th I just think it's weird. It's December 11th and we're still talking about, is there going to be a stimulus or not? Like, isn't yeah. the deadline tonight? In like a few, eight hours, I think. Because um, they're all going on vacation, right? I don't know, man. I don't keep up with that crap anymore. It's like, whatever. They do what they do. I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's priced in. I think it would be bullish if it actually passes anything because I don't think they will. I don't. I think it's all just dumb pointless posturing um but we're seeing i think we're continuing to see at least from my eye some rotation in legacy um you know the big growth stuff is looking heavier and heavier and heavier uh you know tesla's not the point of this show but tesla's getting included in the s p 500 on december 21st um and the spy has to buy shares in order to do that. So a lot of people speculate that that's essentially the top is once they're done buying it for that, people will sell, uh, you know, sell into December 21st. And that 
Tesla is like the sixth largest company in, in the S&P 500 with its inclusion. And if it retraces at all, that will have a, a heavy weight on the rest of the S&P. Um, combine that like antitrust actions with Facebook uh, th that are going on. It's in this big consolidation. If some of these start to topple, Amazon is in this huge consolidation. You'd mentioned like a potential uh, diamond top look that it had going for it. So we're seeing that across these markets while both the Qs and the S&P look pretty dicey. Um, Diamond top looks better and better every week. Yeah. Oh, it looks really good. Yeah, it does. To me, for reversal. So it's like maybe uh, maybe we're going to see a little bit of uh, rotation to the downside for stocks that could give uh, buoy the, continue to buoy the dollar a little bit and put pressure on Bitcoin. We're looking at multiple degrees of separation here, but... That's what we're trying to keep an eye on. Yeah, it's weird because the vaccine stuff is still kind of in limbo. The like COVID numbers are all over the place. The uh, whether or not the election will get certified is kind of in the limbo. <laughs> the stimulus is in limbo. Well, the stimulus will happen. It, the, with the unemployment numbers were insane. They're like eight hundred and fifty thousand people or something. Yeah, Just, like I don't know. We're we're living the upside down. Nothing, nothing makes sense. I think personally, this all lends itself towards maybe we get like a month of downside uh, w between all these things and you know, profit taking and everything else, um, which gives us an opportunity to buy the dip. Because I do think stimulus will get passed in January when they come back. You know, they're just not going to avoid it, especially once they get Trump out of there and you know they all everybody tries to figure out how to be normal again. Um, that's maybe that's naive, but that's my thought. And then also, uh, just for some of these other factors, it seems like there'll be an opportunity, uh, to buy some dips. <laughs> what, it, what, this is that moving average multiplier on Tesla that you're looking at. Yeah. I was, I haven't looked at it in a while. I was going to take a look. Um, it, it's right up at the top of that. Oh, it's oh it is. It. it is hotter than hot. Like if yeah. I, if I three exit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, screaming like even minor retrace for tesla would put it at like what 400 and is it 600 so a 50 percent drop in tesla would have a heavy heavy way weighing on the rest of the s p um it's the same concept as what we've talked about with altcoins and stuff you know like if the if the biggest typed ones start to retrace you better believe that that's going to be represented elsewhere the question is whether that has a broader impact on something like the dixie or whatever I don't know. We don't know. It, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's. It makes for it makes for fun trading in some ways because there are things going up. It's not like it's not like everything is super correlated. Um, you know, I guess the question is like, what's the upside left versus the downside risk, right? Yes, in those. But on the other hand, like metals and oil have had really strong weeks. You know, like it. Gold got blasted two weeks ago, and now it just had two positive weeks in a row off the bottoms. Um, so it's not across the board. Oil con continues to look good. A lot of stocks in the oil space have done well, like uh, Exxon started to recover some. Uh, I had talked previously about my trade in US Steel, which kind of the same realm as oil and some others. Um, uranium stuff caught a gigantic bid, like there's some in interesting rotation in legacy. So I'm not wow. trying to be, uh, yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, that is nuts. Uh, so I'm not trying to be like Mr. Doom and Gloom across the board with legacy, but I don't, it doesn't look to me like it's going to be the same stuff that has like the jug, like where's the 2X in Tesla from here? Or, you know what I mean? Like the. Right. So isn't this just all like late, late bull market rotation into stuff that hasn't moved? Yeah, that's exactly kind of where I'm getting at. Um, which I find very interesting, and it's certainly something to consider as we continue to look forward with Bitcoin, which also looks like it's really late in in at least this local trend. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to be bullish this week. Gotta say, I I applaud you if you're long and holding, but uh, it's not for me. I am, uh, yeah. That's not to say I'm not still very bullish to be spot long. 
you have to mentally be able to accept what could happen there though, right? You oh yeah, spot long. I'm, I'm long for life, like whatever. I'm talking about trading. Yeah, but you could lose 20% or more in your spot holdings and you have to stu- you have to be able to stomach those things, you know? Yeah, but what do I care, right? I'm not paying taxes on it, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been holding forever. Like, what does it matter at this point, right? Like, that's yeah. the hold on meme in a, in a nutshell. You know? my, my, my thing is also that if Bitcoin does that, based on what we've been talking about with these correlations not separating, I think you need to be very picky with your altcoin picks because if you just pop in an altcoin and hope to hold it and get the same minimal drawdown that you get in Bitcoin, I think you're probably in for a rude awakening. Like some of these will drop 50% or more if Bitcoin drops 15%. And that is something that you want to avoid. You want to maintain your buying power. So it's not the worst thing in the world to just sit in Bitcoin and be bored for a little while. Maybe keep a little cash on the sidelines if you want to buy dips or play short-term scalps or those types of things. But it might trade, it might change the way that you trade for a little while. If you've been trading, you know, consolidation pump, consolidation pump, consolidation pump. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be as easy for a little while. Yeah, and some of these alt BTC pairs like Tezos are just absolutely dumpster diving right now. <laughs> yeah. They, um, you know, t- this one looked like it was setting up for an inverted head and shoulders, and then it just kept going. Yeah, I don't. I worry. Got, I worry about Tezos. It just seems it, to me like it's going to make new lows. It does have a multi-month bullish divergence growing here. Although it looks like it's about to fail it, to me. Yeah, but it's it's hard it's hard to be bear like seeing all this stuff together on this specific uh, pair. It's hard to be bearish here for me. It's a place where you might take some risks uh, relative to BTC, maybe on some pairs. <laughs> but don't, it's in the bit W, Brian. But don't be. I don't know if you did. You get the news? It's in the bit W. What's that mean? It's a it's point it's a point five percent constituent of the bit W. Oh, the bitwise, yeah, bit <laughs> bit W. Yeah, it's big. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> deal. It's a big deal. Shouldn't that have sent something like this moving pretty good? Pretty good, you know, like you would think. They I had don't know. they had a decent num- amount of volume on that bitwise product, but uh, your risk reward is is worth pe- peeking at with Tezos. The narrative has just got lost on Tezos, though, like. It's not part of the DeFi narrative. It's it's a platform. It's an ETH killer. While ETH looks as strong as ever, that's a really yeah, tough. Yeah, I, I mean, really I agree. Narrative. I think I think Tezos is trash. It always has been, but <laughs> the, the technicals look okay for a stab here to me. That's uh, all I'm saying. Someone that's asked, all I'm saying. Yeah, uh, Nielsen asked, "What does invalidate a divergence like this?" So, so yeah. you know, theoretically, I'll go first. I'll go first, Brian. You do please. You, you do you. So here's the divergence I'm, I'm talking about. So that's obviously a that's a clear example of a bullish divergence, but and it then play, when I, and it played off it. It went higher. Yeah. Well, the response yes. the response was enough to warrant the action off of that divergence. So I'm kind of looking at the second one, thinking, okay, you know, this isn't exactly a lower low here and on this, this third low, but. And the RSI is hardly a higher low. The RSI is dicey there. What I would have rather to see is that RSI maintain essentially a trend line from your first touch in November to, uh, through now. Uh, have a three-touch RSI line with a three-touch price line. That would be a, tr- a better like long-term divergence to me. You're only looking at a 12-hour chart, though. It might be something nicer on like a weekly chart. Um, but yeah, to me on that, yeah, see, this hasn't even really, oh, okay. Yeah, the two-day chart, ha, see, that, see that RSI where it's a proper two-touch, or a proper three-touch? If you drew that, the third bottom is still kind of maintaining the trend line from the first two. And if that continues to be that way, even if price makes a new low, that, to me, could indicate true exhaustion on this longer-term chart. So, yeah. It reminds me of I, whenever I think of bearish things, I always go to Zcash because some of the <laughs> best the examples. Like, look at this. This is so beautiful. Oh man, I get chills just looking at it. 
Yeah, this look, is, look how it did that over a long period of time, multiple touches, multiple price points. And that's the hard part with divergences. These are additive to your other, you know, to your other decision making. They require patience. It can it can outlast you. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go in on margin because of this. But it's to say, hey, this looks like it's exhausted. You know, like that's exactly what a divergence does. It essentially is saying the price is divergent to the uh, momentum indicator. So, right. It's a hint of exhaustion. It's looking like it can form another one here now. If it makes this was sense. one of the reasons why I bought Zcash in December 2019 for this divergence exactly right here. Yeah. So, you know, once you get one like this, Brian, you just never forget it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, some, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes divergences can be really good to affirm other thoughts that you have, but they can be a, a, a fickle mistress. So be careful out there with those. That's all I got, Josh. I mean, we're sitting at 18K. You're looking at you're looking for 15k. If I want something from here, I want like today or tomorrow to be the the bottom. If it's going to have a super bullish, you know, back to 19.5 type consolidation, which would be pump by the end of the year type of uh, consolidation. I'm not holding. I, I'm not uh, saying that that can't happen. I think that could still happen. That would be a signal of like hyper bullishness. Off we go in the new year. But at the same time, <laughs> I think we should be prepared to accept a much longer term consolidation. Yeah, I mean, I'll say I'll say it like this: the the system I use said to go long on October seventeenth. It's now telling me don't be get long. out, don't be long, be careful, get ready for a dip. So I'm going to trust the system. Be available to buy the dip. That's right. BTFD, Brian. We'll leave it there. Thanks everybody for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Uh, if you want to help us out, we would love you to check out Matcha. Go make a trade on Matcha. Maybe capitulate your bags. Ledgerstatus.com slash Matcha. And give us a review on iTunes. We'd love it. Talk to you later.